I would say another factor that really contributed to my success was treating my entire undergrad experience like one long MCAT prep course. Hey future doctors, my name is Smriti and I'm a medical student at UT Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas. I scored in the 100th percentile without putting my life on hold. And today I'm going to tell you guys a little bit more about my journey towards a 525 MCAT score and a couple of the lessons that I learned along the way. In my case, I only studied for three months and I never studied for more than eight hours in a day. In addition, I took my MCAT in January, so I was navigating final exams, work responsibilities, just the holiday season, and so a lot was going on in my life. Now, obviously, some of these decisions went against conventional wisdom in the pre-med world, but I knew that they were right for me for several reasons. First, my memory for items that I studied more than three months ago is just very poor. Second, I wanted to build in enough time to retake my test in case I had to, but I wanted to build in those couple of months of extra time between when I would get my scores in late February and when I would have to start submitting my applications just so that I could potentially retake the test if I felt that I needed to. And finally, I just am not the kind of person that can drop everything and study for the MCAT for six months. I find it important to have my social life, my school life, uh, my work life. So my point there is just do a little introspection. Think about yourself. Are you someone that needs a well-rounded, enriched life in order to be productive? Or are you more of a person that needs to shut out the world and just do only MCAT for six months? Neither of those is right or wrong. And so don't be afraid if some of your MCAT study strategies or your timeline is different from everybody else's because it's very personalized and ultimately you're gonna do best if you're following the way that works best for your brain. Speaking of making a plan, it's important to actually make a plan. I've seen a lot of times people will just get all their MCAT materials and sit down and try to go at it. That is not necessarily the most productive way to do it because as I found from my own personal experience, you can sit down and think you're accomplishing a lot, but a while after a few weeks go by, you realize that maybe you haven't made as much of a dent as you think you're making. It's really important to actually divide up the material so that you're able to really know what you're accomplishing, when you're going to accomplish it, and be adjusting that plan as you're going. And this can be as detailed as you want it. I actually did an hour by hour study plan for some days that I had, in addition to a day by day study plan for sure for the entire three months that I was studying. One thing that I did was that I was actually working night shifts at the emergency department while I was also studying for my MCAT. And I knew that I was gonna be able to run through a couple of hockey cards between each patient. I wouldn't know how many exactly, which is why I had a column actually on my study plan that I titled at work. And I organized that column by week instead of by day. So I would say, okay, I'm gonna get through these thousand new Anki cards this week. And that was giving myself some flexibility so that on busier days in the ED, maybe I don't get through as much. But on days where there's fewer patients we have to see, I was able to get through a few more cards. But every week, those busy days and less busy days would kind of balance out and I would be able to make a consistent prediction for how much I was going to get through just in a week. And that's just an example of the kind of changes that you can make to your study schedule that's really personal and really dependent on where and how you're studying. Be creative with it so that you can take advantage of those small periods of time in your life that otherwise might feel like they're going to waste or you don't know what to really do with them. I also want you guys to know that we do have some resources for you if you're looking into maybe a little bit more guided journey towards your MCAT success. I would recommend checking out our one-on-one -on -one tutoring on our website or signing up for our newsletter if you want a little bit more information or if you would like some more personalized guidance towards achieving your dream MCAT score. I would say another factor that really contributed to my success was treating my entire undergrad experience like one long MCAT prep course. I bought the Kaplan MCAT books as a freshman. And obviously I didn't know most of the content in them then, but that was not the goal. The goal was as I was learning my biology and my chemistry and my OCHEM, I was learning how to apply them to MCAT style questions so that when it came time to actually do my dedicated MCAT prep, I wasn't learning from scratch. I already knew a little bit about how the test worked and I could jump straight into practice. Practice was truly the very best thing that I did for my score. At first, I was stuck in a rut that some of you might be familiar with. I was scoring pretty well, but I didn't really see any improvement for a while. I was reviewing my tests, I was learning from my mistakes, I thought, but I kept making the same types of mistakes on subsequent tests, and I didn't feel like I was really going anywhere. That was when I started to delve into learning science. 
I was a cognitive science major in college, actually, so that was already an academic interest of mine. And what I learned was actually pretty surprising. I learned that we are terrible judges of how we've learned and how efficient our learning is as people. And so we need more objective guideposts for how to actually learn effectively. And the key to actually learning from a practice test was to go beyond just understanding why I got the question wrong and why the correct answer was correct. It was to find patterns, to do this metacognition and find these flawed patterns of reasoning that were happening in my thought process and approach to these questions and to correct those so that next time I would be able to recognize them and stop myself before I made the same mistake. This is a little hard to understand in the abstract, so I'll give you an example. When I was reviewing Carr's passages at the beginning of my MCAT journey, for example, I might look at a question I missed and say, oh, I didn't look in the right place in the paragraph to find that answer. I need to look somewhere else. Oh well, I found it now and I'm not going to do that again. However, that wasn't really productive because I would find next time that I would in fact make the same mistake and not find the particular piece of information I needed from the passage to answer the question. Now with more improved learning science based methods, I might look at that and say what's in common between the ones that I'm missing. And what I realized was that those were all thematic pieces of information occurring in the last paragraph of the passage. And that made me think, why am I missing those? And I've realized that in English class, in high school, and college, right, they teach you to look for themes in the first paragraph. They teach you about the thesis sentence. And that's not necessarily how MCAT passages are organized just because they are adapted from larger texts. And so you might actually find more of that thematic type of information in the last paragraph. That was really counterintuitive for me. I just wasn't looking for that information in the last paragraph. And those were the questions that I was missing. And now that you see is a review that can be paired with a call to action and you actually see some improvement. No, this this is hard. It is hard to go in and consistently actively review your tests. And our brains are hardwired to look at the path of least resistance. And sometimes doing a full analytical review of your MCAT practice test feels like the path of most resistance. I felt the same way. It may feel half as productive and I don't think I'm getting much out of it. I don't think these strategies are for me. And what I want you to know about that feeling is that that is normal. Your brain is going through something hard and something that is different from the way that you've learned your whole life. And it's going to have some resistance to that. And that's okay if you take a little bit longer, just know that actual learning feels difficult. It feels unproductive. But when you wake up the next day, you realize that you've really cemented things in your brain in a way that maybe you haven't before. So I would say give these methods a chance, give it a try and know that if it's hard, it's supposed to be. And that means it's working. I'll leave you guys with a message that I wish I heard more often when I was a pre-med. There will come a time in your life when you never think about the MCAT again. Right now it feels insurmountable, but it's just the first step in a long journey of physicianhood. And if you can put that into perspective, it'll help keep you sane while you're studying for this test. It's just important to remember the context that you're doing this in. To remember that you're doing this because you love it and because it is your dream. Good luck and I'll see you guys next time.